everybody! So Crystal and I are back today to do something a little bit different and we're going to be sharing with you some of our favorite first sentences from books. This is something I saw the channel Well Done Books do years and years ago, that was Max. He doesn't have a booktube channel anymore, unfortunately, but um, I still thought it was just such a fun idea. Um, and when we have our owl babbles, we will often also often ask this question of people's favorite first sentences and I just think it's so interesting of how a first sentence can just hook you into the story. It does. It either, there's a few things I've read recently just because I was like, hmm, you have my attention. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, so I think we've each picked five books that we love by first sentences of. So Crystal, why don't you share your first one? All right. Uh, this is a classic for anybody mm -hmm. that knows Owl Great, and that is A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab. A bit of a stretch because sometimes I've used two full sentences, but okay. the first like thought. And this is obviously, Kel wore a very peculiar coat. It had neither one side, which would be conventional, nor two, which would be unexpected, but several, which was of course impossible. Yeah, that's a... Definitely like, you're okay, but how? Yeah, <laughs> what is happening? Who is this Kel and what's with his coat? And I would like his coat to be uh. my coat. Uh, my first one is The Astonishing Color of, of After by Emily X. R. Penn, a gorgeous and sad contemporary novel. Um, but the first uh, sentence is, uh, my mother is a bird. That's it. That's the first sentence. Um, and if you've read the book, you realize just how important that first sentence is to the story. Um, if you haven't read this book yet, I highly recommend it. It's definitely heartbreaking, um, content warnings for suicide in here, definitely, but it is just such a beautiful story and it'll have you from the first sentence. <laughs> Alright, what's up for you? Um, next up, I have a kind of Vowel Crate staff favorite between me and Avey, and that, that is The Assassination of Brangwain Spurge by M.T. Anderson and Eugene Yelkin, and it's just this fun mixed media. I guess it's a mixed media if it's just text and... and yeah, it, there's different different I'll aspects it to it. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of um, Brian like, Selznick. Yeah, or like wood etchings mm -hmm. sometimes. It's kind of got that texture to it. Yeah. But the first sentence in this book, after a few photos, not photos, illustrations, is a letter that one character is writing to another. And it simply starts off, My dear friend, you'll never believe who I shot out of a crossbow today. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just like in, embodies like middle grade fun yeah and the general quirkiness of the whole book like the whole book's just I think MT Anderson weird. is so interesting because he's uh, actually there I actually don't know <laughs> um, there are quite a prolific uh, YA uh, author and I've only read Feed by by them and it was completely different like why dystopian oh, so, yeah. but it was also really interesting um, so kind of going through the genres next up I have another middle grade one um, and that is The Legend of Greg by Chris Rylander um, this is such a fun story but the first sentence is it should come to come as no surprise that the day I almost got my face clawed off by a vicious monster it was a Thursday and today is Thursday so we must watch out <laughs> um, but this is just such a fun middle grade adventure that uh, will really again from the first sentence be like okay but why was it a Thursday <laughs> so bad yeah so definitely one to check out I think uh, more and more people are kind of opening up their uh, eyes to middle grade no matter what the age and I am so behind that and March is middle grade March so if oh. you're looking for some new middle grade, this is a good one to pick up. Excellent. I have a stack of middle grade I'd like to read. <laughs> what a good excuse. There you go. <laughs> um, next up for me is an adult horror. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Meddling Kids by Edgar Cantero. It's kind of like a twist Scooby-Doo vibe story. Mm -hmm. And the first two sentences here is, It starts when you pull the lampshade and light doesn't come. Then you know you will never wake up in time. You will never make it to the end of this paragraph alive. No. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> and it's just, I just really loved his writing. I bought this because of the cover and mm -hmm. Scooby-Doo vibes. And since I've read one of his other books and I have a third in the waiting and uh, originally Spanish, um, but this, this is second of three books in English and he's just, he's just so good. So he's very funny too. He's very, 
witty. So it's like horror, but it also has like the wittiness to it. Yeah, but also like some serious, like one of the characters that they pick up to go back to this spooky place is uh, in like a mental hospital right. and he's dealing with so much because of the stuff they dealed with as children as like teen detectives right. and it's just messed up. Awesome. Um, next one is kind of uh, one of Patrick Ness's kind of l lesser known books, and that is The Crane Wife. Um, I This is one of the first books of his I read. I believe I read the Chaos Walking trilogy and then I read this one. Um, and this is an adult novel, if I didn't say that. But it has a perfect first sentence, and when I met Patrick Ness and he graciously signed this for me, I actually like said to him, I'm like, it has one of the best first sentences I've ever read. And he's like, is it the one about peeing? And I was like, yes, it is. So <laughs> the first sentence is, what actually woke him was the un... What actually woke him was the unearthly sound itself, a mournful shatter of frozen midnight falling to earth to pierce his heart and lodge there forever, never to move, never to melt. But he, being who he was, assumed it was his bladder. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I haven't read this book in years now, probably six or seven years, so I'm foggy on all the details, but I just remember it being this just this strange yet beautiful novel involving um, a relationship and their relationship to art. Um, there's strange aspects to it. It's also inspired uh, by the Decemberus song of the same name, oh, if you like the Decemberus. Um, yeah, this was fantastic. If you want to check out something different from Patrick Ness beyond his YA, I would definitely recommend this one. Yeah, I haven't read any of his adult stuff, but I would like to add it to my, yeah. my list because I really, really like it as a, a beautiful, author. A beautiful book. Nice. Uh, <laughs> this one's a behemoth. <laughs> it's a collected anthology. Um, Omnibus, I guess. Yeah, omnibus. But that is uh, John Wyndham, a sci-fi writer from way back when. I think he was really popular in the 50s, kind of when sci-fi was coming to like India. a thing. Um, so my first sentence uh, I mentioned in one of our Owl Babble chats is from the Day of the Triffids, which is like, which I learned recently the opening of the Day of the Triffids inspired the opening scene in the movie 28 Days Later, oh. where he wakes up in a hospital and nobody is around and right. it's just silent and eerie and the first sentence in this is when a day that you happen to know is Wednesday starts off by sounding like Sunday there's <laughs> something seriously wrong somewhere <laughs> and this is one of the examples recently like I think I'm about halfway done this sh novella short story mm -hmm. full-on book I don't know it's like 200 pages novella-ish <laughs> um, that got my attention when I was just flipping through it on my desk I just kept reading mm -hmm. and I was like hmm and halfway through, it's really good. I uh, I am enjoying it a lot. It's it's really interesting. It's definitely a story I've like heard spoken of for all my life, but I've never like thought to go read it. Yeah, and it it's interesting that it's called the Day of the Triffids because you feel like oh, these like alien plants have come to mm. the world and they're gonna do stuff. It's like no, they've been here for a long time and they've been like cultivating these plants that they kind of have to keep like chained up because they're like right violent but then something happens one night where there's like these green comet shooting stars and everybody who saw them went blind but this guy was already in the hospital for something mm -hmm. else and had stuff on his eyes so when he unwraps himself he can see mm -hmm. but everybody around him is blind and he's like what's going on <laughs> interesting so, it's really good cool um my next one is an owl crate pick and that is wild beauty by Anne marie mclemore um again stunning book stunning writing um, and the first sentence just like really kind of foreshadows what's going to happen and it's later they would blame what um, Later they would blame what happened on the little wooden horses um, Did you read this one? I did. I loved it. It's such a beautifully written book um, And it's about this family of women who uh, Are destined to kill the men they fall in love with basically or the, the men they fall in love with will die um, and surprise, surprise, a boy shows up. Um, but yeah, it's just beautiful. such a beautiful book to match this beautiful cover. And yeah, they would blame it on the little wooden horses. <laughs> Those poor little wooden, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, last up for me is a bit of a, 
an actual choice and two honorable mentions. Um, and that is by one of my absolute favorites. This is Jasper Ford. And this book is called Shades of Grey, not to be confused with the other <laughs> Fifty Shades of Grey. And the opening sentence in this book is, it began with my father not wanting to see the last rabbit and ended up with me being eaten by a carnivorous plant. This sums you up violent Jasper plants Ford. In your, in your <laughs> <laughs> Jasper Ford is just so quirky and funny and I just love the language that he uses to just tell weird stuff. Mm. Um, two of the other first sentences I chose from him was from The Air Affair, which just begins with, my father had a face that could stop a clock. <laughs> and from the fourth bear in his like nursery crime series, the little village of obscurity is remarkable only for its unremarkableness. Nice. That's a good, yeah. solid. Um, my last one is a book that obviously got all the hype last year and I love putting it on my top 10 uh, books of the year list and it has it just Lee Bardugo's writing man she is just so fantastic um, it's actually from the prologue so I didn't technically take the first chapter but it says by the time Alex managed to get the blood out of her goodwill coat it was too warm to wear it um, <laughs> which if you've read this book you know it's quite gory and graphic um, <laughs> But it was just fantastic, and that like kind of sums Alex's character arc up pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> um, I cannot wait for the next book in the series to come out. I don't know when that will be, um, but this was just such a fantastic few literature. Um, and I know, I know a lot of people, I think it's one of those books like you either love it or mm. you are very disappointed in it. Um, I loved it. Super fantastic. So I cannot... Just cannot wait to get more from this world. I haven't gotten to it yet, but I definitely uh, need to move it up the list. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I just, I love Leopard. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. All right, so those were some of our fa uh, books with great first sentences. Um, I could have done so many more. I know, like, The Martian has a great first sentence. It does. That, that across that last um, <laughs> Which is, well, I'm fucked. Mm -hmm. Excuse the language. <laughs> See, I, there's another one I was going to chose, but it had a good solid F word in the first sentence, yeah. and I was like, should I? Yeah. Um, and then there's other ones that we always talk about, but I wanted to pick something different, like the Scorpio races has a great first sentence, yeah. and there's just so many good ones. So if you have any good ones that come to mind, leave them in the comments down below for us, because um, first sentence is never going to spoil anything. It's the first yeah. sentence. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Happy reading, and thanks for being awesome. Bye. Bye.